Hey guys, so I tried something a little different on this video, which was specifically to go through the installation process of an unknown operating system that was built or customized on the internet, and then run some security scans on this particular operating system and give a verdict. Now, I just want to give fair warning before anybody follows this, that you're going to want to watch it to the end before you make the decision as to whether or not you want to run this operating system. This is for XP, the integral edition. So what do you say, guys? Let's get into this and check this out together and see what this actually looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go to the basic installation. I'm assuming the installation process is exactly the same as it was on every other version of XP, but we'll find out together. I'm not going to go super far into details. If you need details on how to install XP, I'll put the link to my other video on how to do an XP from ISO to full XP install. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to run through this so that way you guys could visually see it. So far, it's been about the same. I did check the files as they were scrolling through the bottom there for the installation process and didn't see anything out of the norm for XP. Still all looks pretty standard. Oh, this is different. Since this is from the internet, I have not enabled my network adapter. This particular system is installing with no network adapter. Again, not really sure what it does or what it offers. So here we go. Attempt to accept the agreement here and click next. So I will say that during the installation process, I have noticed that it is quite a bit longer than a typical Windows XP. Um, I would even argue that at this point, it's probably been just as long to install the point of sale system as it is to install XP, whatever this is. Um, let's continue on here and see what else we get. Uh, it looks like we're getting additional configuration updates for post service pack three, which means that we're getting the point of sale updates on our XP pro machine here, which I'm assuming this is built off of XP pro and not XP media edition, but it's possible it's on media edition, not a hundred percent sure yet. Okay. So we just went through all the checks there and it completed out and now it looks like we're rebooting again and coming back up into Windows XP. Interestingly enough, we're starting to log into Windows XP. Looks pretty normal so far. So here's a major change, I guess. So what it's doing now is it's going to ask us to install additional configurations during the installation process. And I would suggest you pause it here if you want to check this out before you go through the process because obviously it's going to give you a certain amount of time and a timer to count down how many seconds you have before you actually got to continue. Um, I'm going to leave it all. Uh, see what happens. So let's submit this. I guess the question will remain is once it's up, is it stable? And then the other question is, is it secure? So once we get this thing up and running, I'm going to scan this thing to see if it comes back with anything that's weird. Uh, just because when you have these customizations in the OS, I mean, it gives the people who develop it the ability to add backdoors or remote access into these systems. And frankly, you just never know. So rather be safe than sorry. Once this thing comes up, we'll run a scan on it. We'll check it out and see how it comes up and how it looks whether or not there's anything on it that's funky. So I'm going to let this thing do its thing. I'm going to pause this and we'll pick it up from the next step. Okay guys, so it just finished doing all of its updates and now I am loaded officially into Windows, but it appears that it's going to do a reboot real quick. I'm guessing to apply the updates and changes that just took place during the installation process. Um, so let's pick this up as soon as the system comes back up. Okay, guys, so we're back up. We just finished the installation, um, which went pretty smooth. I can already tell we have MyPal68 installed, so we have the later version of the browser installed, um, which is supported. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually take a look at the computer itself, the configuration. Uh, 
we have allocated four gigs of memory. We have four gigahertz of processor, an i5 10th gen. Service Pack 3 is installed. We have a default system name. I don't see, I'm curious if we have any, have any customizations really. System Restore is still running. So that's all pretty much normal. Um, you know, let's look and see what we have as far as updates. Well, interestingly, we do have quite a bit of application installed. Including Codex. Now, however the updates are installed, they don't appear in here, so we don't have... Let's see if we can see them in the command line. Oh, interestingly, so we do have updates installed, but they don't come back as a KB. They look like they're individual files. So... do show dual core, so we do have two processors. We are x86 based. It is based off of XP Professional. I know this question before that was whether or not we were using XP Professional. Um, we have a generic system name. There's 659 Windows updates installed, which is interesting because that would apply all of the updates plus more. So we know from our WSUS server that total on Windows XP all versions, including the 64-bit edition, has somewhere around 1,100 updates. So we know that 659 of these updates are applied to this system, which is interesting. And the question is, is now what updates are not applied? And also, if we connect this to our WSUS server, will we see these updates have been applied or will the system try to additionally install the additional updates outside of that? From a usability standpoint, so far it looks pretty much standard. I don't see anything that's funky as far as things that would be questionable. Um, I do note that the Windows firewall was turned off on boot. So once we got into the system, I do see that the firewall itself is set. Sorry, I'm just... So I, I do see the firewall itself is just disabled. Um, interesting, we have... BitLocker reader in here. So I'm wondering if we could see encrypted thumb drives. So let's uh, get the system connected to the domain for a second. And once we get it on our domain, let's do a test. Let's see if WSUS server can see it. Um, let's also check to see if there's any group policy configurations in the system before we do so. Um, and then let's check with uh, our Tenable scanner and scan it to see what it comes back with from a security perspective. Okay, so before we do anything, let's uh, check to see what we have specifically from a group policy standpoint. Let's see if anybody's got policy stripped, slimmed into the actual machine. So to do that, we're going to go to a command prompt. We're going to make a directory called tools. Um, and then let's do a GP result. Let's see. Um, okay, so we go. And it does not look like we have any policy configuration of any kind on here. So I think what we'll do is we're going to rename this system. And then we're going to scan it with our Tenable scanner before we add it to the domain to see what it comes back with. And then after we do that, we'll add it to the domain and then we'll add the policies to it and scan it again to see if it comes back with anything different. But we should be able to use our notes from our XP video uh, from yesterday. We could pull that information back and we could do a comparison of the unsecured version of XP versus this version of XP that claims to have the additional security in it to see if it actually does have any additional security in it. Okay, guys. Well. 
Welcome over to our Tenable Nessus scanner here. Um, I added that system to my network, gave it a static IP address. Um, I also gave myself authentication into it by creating an additional account to authenticate into it so I could leave the original one that's intact out of the box uh, configured so that way when we run our scan we could actually see what that account is doing, if anything. Um, and then I configured the scanner on this side to scan it for the out of the box um, configuration and we could see it here. Now just a quick refresh. Um, Windows XP, no policy. We ran this. This is what our vulnerabilities show. So we, we had 129 critical, 266 high, 43 medium, and 134 infos. Um, that's the original scan on the XP machine with all the updates without any policy configuration. So that's basically, you got XP, you had it at home, you installed all the updates, that's what that result would show. So let's take a look now at this uh, integral system that was created on the internet. Um, and as we could see here, it's actually better. So we have to 24 total vulnerabilities. And if we drill into there, we have two critical, one high, three medium, one low, and 29 info. And if we drill into this thing, we could actually see what we have. So, I mean, obviously the critical is going to be the unsupported operating system, but who cares because we already know it's unsupported, right? Um, then we have Windows XP, we have Windows, we have multiple issues, we have two listed. Unsupported OS, again, not a big deal, we already know that. And we have another one here too. We have uh, SMB null session authentication, which means that the built-in admin account, when it was created, is set for no password versus some kind of password that's baked into the registry. So on the configuration of that thing, just change the password for the admin account, and that should resolve that issue. Um, then we have terminal services turned on. So remote desktop services is enabled inbound on that thing. So that's something else I would also turn off because it's built by the internet and only God knows if they have another way into that system. So I would disable the terminal services or change the listening port and then add the username and password to authenticate into it if you must have terminal services enabled inbound. Um, so if we continue on down here and we look at specifically what else we have, um, yeah, here we go. Remote desktop protocol server man in the middle weakness. Um, that's a problem. So at this point, I would say that that system is in questionable. Like why, why does the protocol on that XP machine have all these additional, you know, uh, vulnerability fixes on it, but then allow remote access into it, uh, without, you know, the privileged account. I, it, something's off here with this. So I would actually go into that system and change that. Or at this point, honestly, because I'm a security nut, I don't think I would run it. But again, if you're looking for a system that has all the updates and you're really not gonna store anything on it and it's more of a hobby, I guess you could check it out. Um, we already know that's not FIPS compliant. I mean, that should be pretty much a given. Um, the question is, is though, is once we go through this again and add this thing to the domain, add all the group policies to it and lock down the terminal server and then scan it again, will this look different? will it actually show better? So if we jump back to the actual scan and we do the XP with policy, we could see that there was only six vulnerabilities found and there were info vulnerabilities found in the original vanilla out of the box Windows XP configuration with all the updates. So that's all things considered, WSUS installed, all the updates pushed, the registry change for the point of sale system, um, all the patching, and then the CIS benchmark group policy configuration for Windows 10. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add this integral system to the domain. Once we add it to the domain, we'll apply the group policy to the system and we'll lock down those changes or the, the, the vulnerabilities that this thing finds and then run a scan again and see what we get as a result. So before we continue on guys, I wanna just give you a quick heads up on a couple things that were discovered in the process of adding the system to the domain. The first one is, is that the terminal server configuration is baked. So in other words, the PE system that runs the configuration baked 3389 into the system. And if you change the service host configuration or the registry configuration to use a customized port, it throws an error, reboots the system, and then reapplies the PE configuration for 3389. 
This is also true of the remote assistance application. So you can't disable it. Once you try to disable it, the system will throw an error. The PE will reinstall the remote assistance application. And the remote assistance application just happens to be set to not allow authentication or user interaction. So it allows remote access without any user being present or required user to interact with them to say it's approved for them to connect. I'd also like to add that while I was able to disable or delete the built-in admin account, I couldn't change the password because the password is tied to the registry for the remote desktop services. So even though I was able to change the password or delete the account and recreate the account, I had to delete the SID and the GUID. And then even after I did that, I located in the SMB configuration in the registry, the username and password that were originally configured, which is null, is set for an authentication into SMB without any authentication, meaning that your dollar sign, your shares, like your admin dollar sign, your C dollar sign, those are all enabled and there's no way to password protect or secure them. They're configured for the original account that's set up for the system. Okay guys, so let's get to it, right? We added that machine, we found all those flaws within the configuration, um, and I don't want to speak ill of anybody. It's possible that the individuals that created this just didn't know any better. Um, maybe this is just a passion where it's a labor of love and you know they, they didn't remember. I Again, I can't say for sure who did it, but based off of what I see, I would not run this operating system um, with access to the internet. Uh, that said, how did it do? Well, once we made the changes to the registry and we registry hacked the system to remove the uh, user authentication account, we were able to change the remote desktop listening port. Once we changed the remote desktop listening port, we created uh, an additional firewall configuration to block out uh, connections on 3389 just to disable that completely. And then also added an additional group policy to force the remote assistance to not support the protocols that are only supported in XP. In other words, we basically forced remote assistance to require authentication, but to use NTLM uh, authentication, which is not available on XP, not out the box anyway. And from what I could tell, it's not part of this build package. So in doing that, that disabled our remote assistance and our remote desktop on the default port. So we did see that that helped from a security perspective. Now, when we go into the XP enabled configuration, the GPO enabled, we do have two critical, we have one high, and we have 63 info. And if we drill down further, we will still see the SMB no authentication here. And the reason why this exists still is because even though we've killed the account, somewhere in the registry, there's an additional location where this is baked in. So as previously stated, this gives access to your dollar sign shares on your Windows system. Now it's possible that you could block port 445 on the system and create your additional firewall configuration through group policy to block that port, to block SIFs, and to block the ability to access this. But the fact that it exists in the first place on this system is concerning, especially when we consider that the system that I built previously that didn't have any of these customizations in it, didn't have these critical high and mixed alerts that were part of the actual original operating system. So these are, these are additions, software additions, configuration additions added to this XP machine that have created holes in the actual security. So while there's no viruses, at least from what I can tell on the system, there are some questionable or suspect security configurations on here. So as a result, I would suggest not running this and suggest just going with the vanilla configuration. You would be better off spending the time building out your WSUS server and building out your XP machines and using the patches pushed from the WSUS server and then manually installing the browser you needed than you would be running this custom built operating system. Because at this point, I would say that we've provided information as to why, from a security perspective, you would never wanna run this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this ride and enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more videos. You guys have a good one.